Have you ever wondered what the most watched Netflix film actually is? Let's find out in Arty Charty, Chart Review, Episode 3. Here we have this awesome graph from Stats Panda. They have found the 10 most watched Netflix films by the number of hours watched in the first 28 days. So we can see we have Red Notice here with 364 million hours total watched across the platform in the first 28 days, followed by Don't Look Up, DiCaprio, um, a big star power there, Bird Box, The Adam Project, again, another Ryan Reynolds films. Um, you know, Ryan Reynolds, bankable actor. Extraction, haven't seen that one. The Unforgivable, uh, Martin Scorsese's somewhat indulgent epic, The Irishman, Kissing Booth, Underground. Enola Holmes, I didn't realize that made as much of a splash as it did, but in the top 10 for most watched Netflix films, 189 hours. We have Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, and then The Old Guard. Overall, this is a fantastic chart. It's obviously very current, very relevant, and it's telling a story a lot of people can relate to. Uh, the creators also use the actual film title logos here to fill out the bars. So instead of using just a static color and having the title on the y-axis here, they've done something a bit more creative and um, bringing out the story in, in a way that's not so static and, and a little bit dry, let's say. However, I would maybe shrink the size of this Netflix logo. It does seem a little bit too big. It is slightly distracting and drawing the eye away from the actual data here. What I would actually do is just replace this Netflix in the title with the actual Netflix logo. That way you're saving space and you're more resourceful with your screen real estate. How couples met in the age of the internet. So we are comparing the location or the method that couples met in 2017 versus how they did in 1995 before the real dawn of social media and the internet at large. I was only two years old at this point. So biggest things you can see online here in 2017 is just sucking up all of those couples from meeting at work versus at family uh, versus meeting through friends. In 1995, all of those categories were higher than they were in 2017. But the advent of apps like Tinder and Bumble and Hinge, and I mean, there's a hundred others now, are just really dominating in the in this romance space and that is somewhat unsurprising to be honest it seems almost rare now to find couples who have met through friends or through any other means other than online i mean it's still not a majority still 40 percent although this is 2017 so maybe in 2022 after the lockdowns and COVID 19 that number is actually far higher i wouldn't be surprised if it's well over 50 percent now um but yeah really quite a fascinating difference seeing what life was like in 1995, actually having to meet partners through friends or at work or via family. Even at church, you would be more likely to meet your partner in 1995 than you were in 2017. So this child does a really nice job of telling a, it's, it tells a really great story. And it's something I think a lot of people can probably relate to as well. Um, and they visualize it in a really nice, generally really easy to understand way. So these nice big, old colors differentiating 2017 and 1995, the bright blue and on the opposite side of the color spectrum, this uh, bright pink. So easy to visually separate these in your head. However, I would note that the comparisons really are, you're trying to make are between each of these categories. So you're trying to compare online in 2017 to online in 1995. Um, because these are vertical bars, your comparison needs to be done horizontally, but you can't really do that because they're stacked vertically. So uh, maybe a better way to do this could be to have a, a dual category bar chart. So you would have online for 2017 on the right hand side, let's say, and then for 1995, you would have uh, the bar on the left. So you could draw those comparisons even quicker than you can now. And I would note that this is not a completely um, representative sample. This is only based on about 5,000, 5,500 heterosexual couples in the United States who specifically responded to this survey. So it's not a completely, uh, it can't be completely extrapolated to the rest of the population. For example, heterosexual couples who responded to the survey may just in general be more likely to have met online versus the rest of the population. So you need to keep that in mind with survey data especially. Okay, now we have what looks like the distribution of Lego sets based on the number of unique parts that they contain. Uh, so if we were to look on the far left here, there are only 53 Lego sets in existence that contain over 3,200 parts. So, God, yeah, that's a hell of a lot. 
Then we have 180 sets between 1,600 to 3,200. And the majority, over 4,500 sets, contain less than 50 parts. So I can't really imagine what you could build with less than 50 parts. I'm not a leather expert, so maybe you can build loads of stuff. It's essentially a bar chart, but it's, it's portrayed in a very nice and very creative way. So firstly, everything is on this mock 3D Lego box. So it looks like you're getting it and you're turning the box over and you're seeing this chart here. It's a nice touch that the creators used. The bar charts as well are done in this pseudo 3D style. So I imagine that there are 53 single cubes of Lego here that create this bar here. Therefore here there's 180 single cells or single cubes of Lego in this one. And I imagine here would be 4,517. If it isn't like that, they missed out on a trick. Um, I'd be interested to know how the creators actually made this, whether they've used a 3D rendering program or if it's all sort of mocked up by them in something like Adobe Illustrator. Nice simple data presented in a way that's not just a standard bar chart, but it's something that people can sort of hold and grab onto. It's nostalgic as well. It brings back memories of playing with Legos as a child and it's, it's doing a little bit more than just presenting the data. So really nice job with this one. Things I would change, there actually isn't a title on this chart as such. Like the only title we seem to have is classic. Um, I don't really know what that refers to. I don't know if that's like classic Lego or, or what, but really we should just say what this data is in the title here. Also as well, there's a huge chunk of text here that I imagine very few people are actually going to read. It ends up cluttering the chart and it's, it adds a lot of confusion to it. It makes it a bit more difficult to know where to look. I'll also have a look over here, which I, I think is try meant to be a legend, but it also looks like part of the box. So you have the ages from four to 99. I think that's a standard Lego age range. Uh, you don't want a 100 year old playing with Lego, God forbid. This then here is actually is the data. So 12,803 unique Lego sets, 47,000 unique parts. I mean, that is just, phenomenal. Uh, 216 unique colours as well. So Lego DataViz is actually a fairly um, popular pastime for many DataViz creators. Uh, if you just Google it, you can see there's loads of, of stuff that's been done about it. Distributions of colours, distribution of colour over time. So you can see Legos used to be really red, white, yellow, very basic sort of uh, primary colours. And over time, they've expanded into all of these different shades of sort of pastel -y tones and greens, blues, and browns. Here we have a vertical stream graph, which tells you more or less the same thing. And next we have this animated map from Reddit user Yu Butel, charging in the USA. So it's a time-lapse of every EV electric vehicle charging point since about 2012 or 2000, 2010, sorry. And we can see in the beginning, it kind of looks like it's mostly around the population center. So you could be forgiven for thinking this is just a population map of the United States. But then around 2014, we see Tesla's charging points sort of stretch across the highways of the USA, the interstate highways. And wow, in 2016, Tesla's really picking up loads in California, loads in the north, east of the United States. Again, those tendrils filling out the interstate highways. 2018, it really looks like Tesla's completely dominating the EV charging space in the USA. Um, all these others, oh, we have a smattering of CCS uh, north of Texas and again now uh, yeah CCS and Chad Demo looks like again filling out these interstate highways here so yeah again this is a very current map it's electric vehicles taking off hugely in the past several years so this has come at a nice time obviously it's done really well on Reddit over 12,000 upvotes um, probably uh, several hundred thousand views I imagine and we are seeing Really, I think the most interesting part of this is seeing the uh, expansion of Tesla in a really short space of time, it seems, from 2015 to 2016. I mean, just look at that difference there. Really quite huge. Uh, this map would be quite nice to have on uh, an interactive with a slider, so you could slide back and forth between the different dates and really zoom in and maybe you want to hover over each of these bubbles, each of these circles, to actually see what those charging stations, where they are, um, and their capacity and things like that and reduce the opacity a little bit because if you see over in let's say in this northeastern part i imagine there's loads of charging stations here that you just can't see on the map because the opacity is set to zero percent so you can't actually see beneath those circles so i would maybe change the opacity as well on that one overall really nice work 